Just pulled into Grand Forks, BC, and I stopped here on my travels to Alberta to grab a shower. And while I was here, I met a gentleman at the rec center that told me that this pretty river behind me wasn't so pretty about a month ago. This river was at its highest, broke its banks, and flooded the whole town of Grand Forks. While I was here, you could still see stacks of the businesses all sitting out on the street side. So we're gonna drive through town right now and see if we can capture some of that carnage on video for you. So welcome to Grand Forks. I only drove through here about a week ago and wow, the city has done a ton to clean up. There's a little bit of piles here and there like in front of people's homes and some bigger spots around businesses. But when I pulled through here, all in front of that business there was like all the contents and all the inside stuff was all stacked outside. This town has cleaned up super quick in the last week. I could imagine what this place was like when the flood actually just happened because this all this whole area was I guess all flooded with water and it destroyed like half the businesses that are down here that's what the inside of the businesses look like is they're now gutted and on the outside um, a lot of the houses we've also been dri um, driving by in some of those first clips if you take a look they're empty the guys have had to gut their entire home they lost it all Of these houses down here are fully empty. Another one in front of us that's fully open. taking a poop <laughs> it's like wait up honey I'm taking a poop still hope you washed your hoofs bud All of these houses are fully empty. Their whole lives are thrown out on the streets. Doors and windows wide open to air everything out. There is a couple of houses up here where there is people still in them. But if you look at the surrounding houses around here, they've all been demolished. So these guys are probably living in semi-wet houses right now. So sad. Another one here with the doors wide open. Such a cute river can do such damage. Sad.
I don't know about you, but I'm done seeking out the negative stuff. Let's drive into town and see how beautiful this place really is. Drove around the corner and I found myself Another home hardware, which means let's go in and see if we can clean out the shelf again and get the rest of those little latches I need to finish my cabinets up. Thank you. They've got none. So that means I better be like stopping at every one of these and cleaning them out because I need, I still need more. Whatever, it's a continuing project. It's not like I really need them because all the ones I bought yesterday, I haven't even put them on yet. So no rush. Was Grand Forks. Now we're moving on because the destination that we are aiming for today is a Soyuz. A Soyuz is like hot. It's like our desert sort of. Like super hot temperatures around a lake, really arid, kind of desert looking, just without all the sand. That's where we're heading today, so we're gonna move on to the next town. We're gonna stop every little place as we go. This goes passed out. <laughs> Are you gonna sleep all day? Hey, you gonna sleep all day? That's okay, when we get to a Soyuz, we're gonna huck you in the lake. We're gonna throw you in the lake. Over there on the hilltop, there's an abandoned house. It looks like, it looks like an old farm with an old bus in the back. I really, really want to go there. I don't know how. There's a road here. Looks like an old RV trailer way on the far side over here. Appears to be a farmhouse down in the bottom. I'm not sure if it's occupied or if there's anything occupied over there, but I really, really want to go see it. It's always scary when you're this far out into the woods and you start adventuring into guys' properties like this, because you never know the kind of person that's out there. Um, we're in Canada, so it's not like the US where everybody's got a shotgun ready to go. But when you're out this far in the hillbilly woods, <laughs> you never know. So I'm just gonna flip the camera around, zoom in on that, and see if I can see any life over there. So beautiful down here too. What do you say guys? We risk it. Let's go. Look at that place from here. <laughs> yeah. It's like adventure heaven. And the old school bus back there. Crap. All right, this does not take me down to the service road and there's gonna be no way to back out of here. This goes down to somebody's house. 
<laughs> we're gonna have to go to their front yard, do a U-turn and turn back around. Looks like getting to that house is gonna take some planning. So I think for the next time I'm out this way, I'm gonna plan and try to find a way to get there. I'll do some research on it and see how I can get to that service road because I need to go check that house out. It's mandatory. <laughs> One of those things that when you see something, you're like, ooh, I have to do that. Oh, hello, bro. Hello, tree. A tree in my house. <laughs> Dear big mysterious house on the hill, I will find you. We're still about a hundred kilometers outside of a Soyuz. So since it's such a beautiful day, I just seen a sign that said Jewel Lake 15 kilometers this way. And look at this farm country. So, uh. the cattle guard heading up to the lake. One of two things is to keep the cattle out or keep the cattle in. Hmm. Oh, never mind. That answered the question right there. All right, Chrome, don't hit a cow. Don't, oh, look how beautiful that is. <laughs> don't hit a cow, Chrome. Guys, did I tell you I want a drone? I want one for moments like this. Damn. Yep, I need a drone. It is so freaking warm out here. So I'm gonna get into something a little lighter. I also put my little my little water socks, water shoes, whatever they are, but one sec. All right, that'll be nicer. I'm gonna go throw this guy in the lake. You wanna be thrown in the lake? He's like, Dad, it's way too damn hot. I hate seeing stuff like this. Yeah, two of my favorite things are not allowed on the beach. So we're gonna drive away from, you know what, I'm taking the dog down there. I don't even care. Normally I would obey those signs if we were like in the city, but we are like so far in the mountains right now, it's ridiculous, so I'm taking the dog to the beach. Did pretty good. I don't know if you guys seen that, but <laughs> did pretty good. All right, I'm gonna take you guys with me this time, so let's hope I don't drop my phone. Hey, buddy, 
got it, buddy. Good boy, Disco Bear. <laughs> that was awesome. It was just shady, and then all of a sudden, boom, the sun comes out. Disco's doing good, man. Hey, you doing good, bro? <laughs> That's Disco's second time swimming. First time I only did it with him one time. I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> He's so freaking adorable. Hey, bro. <laughs> He's doing really, really good out there. I love this. <laughs> Disco. Hey. You wanna do it again? We'll do it one more time. One more time. <laughs> Let's see if you'll follow me. Come on. Come on, bro. He's super cute. I was carrying him out there and just as we got deep. His paws and stuff were already swimming and he wasn't even in the water yet. All right, we're gonna do this again together. Hey. Bro. Hey. Yeah, it was a hard one. It's hard to do it while holding you guys at the same time. If I'm out of breath from dragging him out there, he must be out of breath from all that swimming. <laughs> Super happy with that little guy. I think he kind of liked it. First time he was like, oh dad, me and you ain't gonna be friends ever again. But after a while, he started getting really good at it. In here, bro. <laughs> I wish I had my camera on me that one time. Um, I don't know what I got on film or what you guys seen because the phone was just propped up. But when those two people were coming in on the kayak, <laughs> um, they were laughing because I was, I was holding Disco, he's in my arms, and you could just see his little feet, he's just dangling there, he's, he's already like dog paddling already, and I haven't even dropped him in the water yet. It's kind of like he was just like practicing, he was just, it, was, it was so cute. Are you coming? The truck's back here. He's standing by that white truck over there like it's ours. No, it's this one. He's like, no, dude, it's this one. Told you it wasn't that one, come on. <laughs> These little water shoe things are actually really awesome. <laughs> I like them because you can go into the lake and stuff like that and you don't have to feel like the muck and the silt on your feet. It's nice. And believe it or not, these things actually dry super easy. I got them on Amazon. If I remember, I'll throw the link in the top, but just look up like water shoes or water socks. My underwear is wet. One second. You didn't peek, did you? <laughs> Lawn chair. I really could use a footstool though. 
Ah, wait a sec. See? Oh, my little cooler. Makes a damn good footstool. Oh, my goodness. Guys, this weather is so freaking warm right now. Just wait till we get to a Soyuz. It is like super freaking hot there. Mm. This is so nice. You guys ever get that feeling, you know, when like the sun therapy just feels so freaking good? How you feeling, buddy? You feel better after you had a big swim? <laughs> Proud of you, bro. You did so good. You did so good. I gotta move you guys for one sec. We need to get in here. Look at that. All my ice is gone. The water is still cold, but the ice is completely, oh, never mind. There's one chunk left. I got this ice, not yesterday, but the day before. Ice retention in this Pelican is really bad. But I read that the 30 quart version of this holds ice for like 10 days. I really want it. I might sell this one. Check this out. Mosquitoes. It's called the Electric Unicorn. It's a white IPA. Super freaking awesome. And besides, any beer with a unicorn on it, it's got to be good. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. Hope you guys enjoyed whatever kind of journey we went on. Take two. <laughs> take two. Disco take two. <laughs> we gotta do another take. I didn't know what to say. This is that moment at the end of the video where, where I try to think of something awesome to say. Try to think of something like witty or inspirational or informational. <laughs> today, today, I got nothing. <laughs> I don't got anything. Hold on. I gotta think about this for a sec. Take three. <laughs> Making YouTube content every day is not something that I planned on doing when I set out to do this van life journey. I never thought I would have just about 10,000 people or by the time you watch this video, maybe 10,000 people standing in front of me watching my videos. I never thought that somebody's voice could have that much effect and that much power. I never thought that somebody would even watch my first video, let alone be watching my videos now over nine months later. Having the power and the having the power to voice your own opinion and have people follow you and and be intrigued with what you do is a feeling inside that I can't explain. Sure, I've been a DJ and an entertainer my whole life, so being in front of the camera is no big deal for me. But to know that I can say something and people will respond back to me saying that it changed their day, it changed you know, how they were feeling at that moment, or it's changed their life, or it's given them the courage to jump forward, it's given them the courage to do what they've always dreamed about. To know that on a daily basis is the most incredible feeling in the world. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys. You know, I would have tapped out making videos a long time ago if nobody watched them. Sure, I might start making some fun ones, but I would have, would have never turned it into, you know, practically a daily vlog not quite but close enough like last month alone i uploaded 29 freaking videos that's insanity that's a crazy amount of work but the cool part was to know that you know the amount of minutes that people watched over that month was over a million minutes that someone watched my face or disco's face or this channel that people sat there and listened to my voice and listened to whatever I had to say, they didn't care. 
you know, and I've been through some ups and some downs on this channel. I've been through moments where I felt like creatively I just was kind of in a rut and stuck. It wasn't that I was creatively in stuck, it's just that sometimes when I stay in Vancouver too long and I don't branch out and go somewhere, I start to feel trapped. I start to feel like creatively I'm just being suffocated. That's where you'll see last minute trips of me going to like Tofino or the Sunshine Coast or this time to, to Alberta. I think it's amazing that you guys are here with us on this journey and if it wasn't for each and every one of you, I wouldn't have the life I have today. I wouldn't wake up feeling the way I do every day if it wasn't for each and every one of you that wake up and spend five minutes, spend 10 minutes, spend 15 minutes with us. It means the world to us and this channel wouldn't be anywhere without you. Yep, you. And the person that's sitting there thinking that, oh, and he's not talking to me. No, it's you I'm talking about. You, every single one of you. I thank you all from the bottom of everything I've got for what's happening in my world today. Sure, I may have taken the courage to do this all myself, to ditch it all, to sell it all, to quit the job, to move into the van, to start van life, to start moving around. Sure, I did that on my own. But this journey that I'm living now with creating YouTube videos every day and this whole new passion for video editing is thanks to each and every one of you. So I got mad love for all of you. Thank you for being here. Say something in the comments and I will see you guys very, very soon. Probably tomorrow. Just saying.